Hey everyone, are you ready for section three? I am. Hey Kristen Creates peeps, so you know what? I think that we can start section three today and finish section three today. What do you say? Kristen Som here, and I promise it's not going to be hard. So there are three blocks for today, and they're very simple applique blocks with one applique piece. We can totally do that, right? So that part will be super easy. And then after that, after we get our three blocks, we're going to put them all together because there's only one filler block. So we totally have this. So let's go over what we need for today. So for our blocks today, we are going to do the star blocks. So they are on page 12 of our guide, of our booklet, and they are, like I said, very simple applique blocks. So let's start, we'll go through each one separately. So the first one, and we only need one of these for section three, but you know, we've been working ahead and, and saving up some blocks for later um, sections, and you'll see that that will work out really well. So the first one today is this white with red dots fabric on it, and make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. It's a pretty big piece. This one we are gonna start with at eight and a half by eight and a half, and like I said, it's the white with red dots. Eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric on the first star block. And then for the applique piece, it is this super cute green with holly, holly berries, green with holly berries. And this one is our one applique piece and it is at six by six for our main fabric, six by six. And I did back these with fusible stabilizer as well. So on this one, we are going to quilt it. We're gonna quilt all three of them. And that means that we want batting. Our final cut size is six and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that's at least seven by seven, at least seven by seven for your batting on all three of these. We'll go over each of them, but just so you know. All right, so on this one, this first one, star one, we are going to quilt this with Christmas eight. That is the um, stockings, the stockings, Christmas eight, and we're gonna use six by six in horizontal. Six by six horizontal in Christmas eight in size six by six. All right, so that's for the first one, that's this one. That's number one. Number two is really cute. This one, uh, the main fabric is white on white dots, white on white, back it with fusible stabilizer, these big pieces, and especially light colored, definitely a good idea to back them. So fusible stabilizer, just like the other one, we're gonna start with this at eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric. And then our one applique piece is this really cute teal with snowflakes on it. And this one is six by six, and I did back it with fusible, bleh. <laughs> <laughs> I did back this with fusible stabilizer, six by six, and then we are going to quilt it. So we always want a piece of batting, and for the batting, we want six, seven by seven. My goodness, I, I did too much today, I can tell. Can you tell? <laughs> You're going to love the bloopers, right? So seven by seven for our batting on this. And then we are gonna quilt it. This one is gonna be in winter too. That's the one with the snowmen on it, snowmen and swirls on it. And we're gonna use six by six for our quilting. So that is star number two. And then for the last star, we are gonna use this light green. It's like a sage green, very light sage green. And this one, eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric, just like the other two. Back it with fusible stabilizer eight and a half by eight and a half for star three for the main fabric. And then for the applique piece, it is the red with flowers on it. And this is gonna be six by six, backed with fusible stabilizer if you choose. You don't have to on the applique pieces. I definitely do. I like that, um, but totally optional. So six by six for your one applique piece for star three. And then just like the others, we're gonna use a piece of batting that is seven by seven. Seven by seven for our batting because our final cut size is six and a half by six and a half. So it doesn't have to be seven by seven. It needs to be at least seven by seven so that it will catch, so that there's enough room for the tack down, um, but it really can be any size that works for you. 
And in fact, if you're going to merge these together and if you didn't already cut your batting, you could put one big piece down, but that's up to you. Um, so those are our three applique pieces. I'm sorry, for that one, we are going to quilt that with Christmas eight. So the same, the stocking, same as star one. Star one and star three both are quilted in Christmas eight, which is the stockings, and in six by six horizontal design. All right, so just the middle one, star two, is winter two with the snow, the snowman. And it looks really cute. I looked at it and you can actually see the stockings quilting around. You could always change that. That's completely optional. Honestly, I think geometric, I think it's three. I'm not absolutely sure. Um, but the one that looks like the star, I think that'd be pretty cool. So hopefully one of you will do that and, and I'll get to see it. I, I think that would be a fun one. But there's lots of quilting designs. If you go onto Kimberbell.com, um, there's a ton of quilting designs to choose from. But these are the three that are in the book, so I'm following the book on this. Um, so that's it for the stars, and then we will talk about the filler blocks next. So one thing also I want to mention is I am going to merge two of the stars together. I don't think it's possible to do three. So the final cut size is six and a half by six and a half, so you would need a hoop that is minimum like really tight fit 13 by 13 and the biggest I have is 10 by 16 and that is not big enough to fit all three so you could do two in one hoop and one in another hoop you could save one for later if you don't want to do all three of them right now I'm going to do all three because I'm liking the idea of as we get closer to um, another section we have lots of blocks that are already done I think that's pretty cool um, but totally optional. So I am going to show you on the computer how to merge two together. It should be super simple. Um, and then we'll talk about the filler blocks. All right, and for our filler blocks today, for section three, there's one. We have one filler block. How cool is that? I'm pretty excited about that. So the filler blocks, you can see them on page 61 of your booklet. And it is the cutest fabric ever. Oh my gosh, look at that. Is that the cutest thing ever? I love this one. I love it, love it, love it. Oh my gosh, pink trees even. <laughs> this is so cute. So we are gonna start with our uh, main fabric on this at, what is it? All right, so it's seven by seven, backed with fusible stabilizer for mine, totally optional for you. Um, if you cut it to the exact size that's needed, which is actually six and a half by six and a half, then if I were you, I would stabilize it just so that it's the stitching isn't pulling in and it actually ends up at six and a half by six and a half. But you do you, your quilt. So I did mine, I cut my filler blocks a half inch larger in most cases, and then I will finish it off by by cutting it down to six and a half by six and a half that it makes it easier for me in my opinion because then it will catch the uh, tack down stitch and that's not necessary we talked about it in the first filler block video you can tape it in place that's totally fine but um, since I had the opportunity to cut mine a little bit bigger I did for those that didn't see the cutting video before you cut that's okay it don't worry it the six and a half by six and a half will work fine so anyway I cut mine to seven by seven and we are going to quilt this so that means that we want a piece of batting and what I did is I have the same size batting so I have seven by seven for my batting seven by seven for our one filler block and we are going to quilt this with lines six in a six by six vertical design. Not going to see a whole lot, honestly, on this busy fabric, but oh my gosh, it's so cute. That is just really, really, really cute. I love this one so much. So anyway, fun, fun. Um, so we have that one filler block and you know what's really cool? We are going to be able to put all of section three together because we worked ahead. Remember I talked about working ahead. So we have the Y block that we already made previously, and this is for section three. We have the snowflake block. We will use this in section three as well. And one of our present blocks will also be in section three. So we already did all of these. So this section that we're just going to fly right through section three, very, very simple. Hi everyone, so I'm at my computer now and I am going to open Embrilliance Essentials and I'm going to show you how to join the stars, but also I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'll show you. So let's start with the, the first two stars. 
So I'm opening in Brilliance Essentials and it opens up to my 8x8 hoop. That's what I used last. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here to this Preferences folder, click on that, and I'm going to try my 9x14 hoop and see if that will fit. So I know I can't do three stars in one hoop, so I'm going to try my 9x14. So I'm going to say OK. And then I go up here to this ro compass rose and I'm going to hit the H button for the hoop and it just shows me my whole hoop. All right, so we always start by bringing in the quilting. So I'm going to go up here to this merge stitch file button and I'm going to look for the first quilting design, which is Christmas eight. That's the stockings in six by six horizontal. So let's see. Um, right there, Christmas eight. Embroidery files, Pez, and I'm looking for six by six in horizontal. They're in numerical order, so right there. Six by six, Christmas eight, horizontal. All right, now it goes to the center, and I'm actually going to leave it in the center so that I can bring in the star and not have to line it up. It will line up perfectly if I keep it right there for now. So from there, I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File, and I'm now going to look for the star design. So I'm going to close out this quilting. And there is my Cup of Cheer quilt. Embroidery Files, Pez is the what I use for my machine. Cup of Cheer quilt. And then this is an applique block. So it's that first folder, and there's the star right there. So I'm going to double click on that. It will go right to the center. So that one is perfect, done, done, done. All right, so to move it, I've mentioned this in other videos, you need to click outside of the area and drag it so that you get all of it. And you gotta check over here to make sure you actually have it all. That's one way. The other way is to go over here to the window and click on and drag everything up. I noticed it, I don't think it did it when I did, yeah. It does do it that way as well, but it is a little bit, more difficult in my opinion. So anyway, um, start down and drag up or just drag all of them. Either way, you can see that this is all of the quilting designs, the five part of the quilting design and then the, the star. So you have everything and once you have them both, you can move it out of the way. So I'm going to move it pretty far to the corner here. Now I want to point out that I've had other, I've had people say, um, I brought it to my machine and then it didn't, it said that it was too big for my hoop. If you are bringing this too far over, if you're going over this hoop at all, that's my dog. Where is he? Over there. Um, if you, you can see his little bum in the corner. <laughs> if you bring it over the hoop at all, then it is not going to work for you. It'll say that it's too big for your hoop. And once you've joined them, you can't move them around. So be very careful with that. Do not go over that hoop line. All right, so that's the first one. So the second one, I'm going to go here to Merge Stitch File. And for the second one, we are looking for Winter 2 in 6x6 six six for the quilting. We're bringing in the quilting. Here's my quilting bundles. Uh, what, winter 2 right there. And we're looking for 6x6. Six Embroidery files, block by block, Pez for my machine, and then a six by six. They're in numerical order, so you can just scroll on down. There it is right there, six by six, winter two. Double click on it, and it goes to the center. Now, it looks messy here, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave this for a minute. And, you know, there's another way of bringing in that star. So you could go, like we did on the first one, and go to Merge Stitch File, find your star, and bring that in. That works great and it will automatically go to the center when you do that. The other option is you can click on the star, just the star, not the quilting, just the star. You can see it right here. And then I'm going to hit control C on my keyboard to copy and control V to paste. And it, let's see, there's the other one right there's the first one right there's the second one. And when I, um, when I click outside, it'll look like, oh, I don't have it. What happened? I thought I, I um, copied it. Well, it's because it went on top of the other one, directly on top. So when you do it this way, the only negative is that it's not going to center for you. But the star design is awfully easy to center, all right? And we have those black squares that I'll show you in a second here. 
So there's the black squares and that will show you that you're right on the center line. So that was very simple. That's another option. You Either one will work totally fine. All right, so now if I were to grab this and move it out of the way down here, it's going to bring just the star because you can see I just have the star highlighted. So I want to make sure to highlight all of it, the star and the quilting design right here. This number three is our quilting design and number four is the star. And once I have everything highlighted, then I can grab it and move it out of the way. So I'm going to move it down here doesn't matter if you do the left or the right, whatever you feel comfortable with. All right, and if you have a bigger hoop, like a 10 by 16, you could use that. I will have a little bit of overlap here with my fabrics, but I think it's enough that, I think I have enough room that I'm not too worried about it. All right, so that one is done kind of, but we wanna join it, right? So right now we have 16 colors, um, 16 color stops but notice that remember like all the other ones that we've done before the, that default one blue and default two orange that are duplicated and so if we kept it like this we're going to lose our opportunity to have our uh, placement and tack down of our main fabric it, it will join everything with the placement and and tack down of our batting so we don't want that and notice look at here there's another default one blue and orange in our star i think those might be okay we'll test that and see but we know for certain that this within the same number this number one here is that first design we know for sure that those will join so we don't want that to happen so we're going to easily click on the color and then click on the color down here and change it so i'm going to just choose my first color that comes up it doesn't matter what color you use I'm going to choose dark aqua and say OK. And then same thing for the orange. Click on that. That it's just telling you what step. So we're on one four and then click on the color down here. And I'm going to choose the first one that comes up, which is blaze. All right. Um, now on the turquoise, that's always the quilting design. And actually the first one and the second one, they're both meant to be white. They're on white fabric, and so Kimberbell uses white um, on their quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep this and let it join. I think that will be fine. So on this default one blue and orange of the star, though, I don't want these to join with this, but I have a feeling it might not, and it can't hurt to test it, right? So that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it, and we'll just test it and see how it does. Because it goes into its own tab, it doesn't matter. It's not going to wreck anything. We're not going to have to redo anything. So let's just hold off on that. So we're gonna leave this and we're gonna come down here to this next quilting. So if I click on this, you can see it's all of this. This is the five steps. But to see the five steps, we have to click on this plus sign. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign and it opens it up and shows us the five steps of the quilting. So just like before, we have the blue and the orange, we kept them up here and then we did the three and the four, we changed the colors on them just so that they won't join. So same thing, here's the three and the four of the step three. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one and just like before, click on the color, click on dark aqua and say, okay. For this orange, same thing, click on the color, choose blaze and say, okay. So that will make it so that those will join. And that's, that's our goal, that's what we want to happen. So on the star, let's see, here's our star. We've got the blue orange, we've got prickly pear. So the prickly pear, those would join, I believe. I'm not 100% certain, but the prickly pear will very likely join. And we want those to be different because the first one is going to be in sage green and the second one is going to be in, I think it's called mint julep. Um, so yeah, for the star itself, for the applique piece um, or for the applique thread for the satin stitch. So I'm going to change this. I don't want these both to be prickly pear. We can leave one as prickly pear, but then we want time to be able to change this thread color. So I'm going to go ahead and change this one. So again, click on the one you want to change, then click on the color and choose whatever color. So prickly pear is what's coming up, but it wouldn't be the same prickly pear because this is a default six prickly pear and this is a number prickly pear, but I'm not going to chance that. I'm going to go ahead and change it to antique, which is just the next color down. And I'm going to say, OK, so then it's something different. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So this should all join the way that I'm thinking. It, it's possible it won't because 
of um, the, the stars that being in the middle, it might uh, make it so that these don't join. I think it will though. So let's just test it. So let's go ahead and go to, let's see, we have everything, right? We did, we changed the thread for the second star. We want to keep the thread for the quilting. I think we're good. Let's just test it. So I'm going to go to utility color sort. We're currently on 16 colors. Let's see how much it changes. It takes it away by seven color changes. So I'm going to click new view and see how it opened another tab. Here's the original one with the four different designs that we have. And then the second one is all one design because it joined everything. But let's see and make sure that it joined correctly. All right, so this first one is the placement for the batting. Those are perfect. The second one is the tack down of the batting. That's perfect. And the third one is the placement of the main fabric. All good. And the fourth one is the basting stitch or tack down of the main fabric. So that all worked out perfectly. And then our two quilting designs. So those are exactly how we wanted them to be because I want them joined um, because I'm going to use white on both of them. If you didn't want to use um, the same thread color, you would either hit stop on your machine or change the color um, so that it doesn't join. I, this is exactly how I wanted it, so that worked out perfect. All right, and then this next one is the star. So this is the applique piece. Um, this is a placement stitch for the applique fabric for our star, and so that's perfect. And then the second one is the tack down of the main fabric for the star, the applique fabric for the star, so that's perfect. And then we have one um, satin stitch for the star and then another satin stitch of the star. So that worked out exactly perfect. So that one is done. Wonderful. Love it. Um, so I am going to save it. Do a file, save stitch file as. And I'm going to bring it to um, cup of chair quilt applique blocks. And then it, where's the star? There's the star. I'm going to actually just, Change, I'm going to create my own name for it. So the reason that sometimes I go into the same name and then I just make a change on it is so that they're in the right order. But I'm going to just say star one, two, um, grouped or joined or whatever. Oops, helps if we spell correctly. Okay, star one and two grouped. That's how I didn't put an and sign because sometimes that doesn't make it happy but anyway so star one two grouped I have that one that's perfect if my machine was on I would send it to the machine now I want to do a whole nother one because remember we have three star blocks but I'm going to do something a little bit different so I'm going to do file new page all right and I'm still on my 9 by 14 hoop I'm going to go ahead and bring in that last star block, but first I bring in the quilting. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file, and I believe it's that Christmas 8, 6 by 6 in horizontal. So we're going to find that again, and let's see, Christmas 8 right there, and embroidery files, Pez for my machine, and I'm looking for a 6 by 6 in horizontal right there. All right, double click on that. And then before I move it, I'm going to bring in that star. I wonder if I did a control V if it would do it again. Let's just check that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So on a different page, remember I had copied it and now I'm still able to paste it. So that's pretty cool. Notice it didn't go to the center and that's okay because when it's, when the block is in the center, um, it's easy to move it and line it up just right. So I'm going to go ahead and just line that up. And let's see, right there. So you use these little black squares to make sure that it's all correct and, and lined up just right. So that's perfect. So I have to click outside of it and then drag up or drag down wherever outside of the box to be able to get all of the pieces. And then again, I'm going to move it over here. Now you could, like I mentioned um, when I was showing all the fabrics, you could do the two together that we just did and then you could do one in a smaller hoop and and call it a day but since we also have that one filler block and the cool thing about that one filler block is it's the same size as this so might as well join it right and get it um, so that we 
have, we're saving on stabilizer. That's the biggest thing is we're saving on stabilizer and probably a little bit of time too. So I'm going to go ahead and join that. Um, I'm going to bring in that uh, one filler block that we have. So I'm going to, it's just a quilting design. So very simple. I'm going to go to this merge stitch file. And this one <clears throat> is the lines six, six by six in vertical. All right. So I'm going to close up Christmas eight. That's not what we want. We want lines six embroidery files, Pez for my machine. And we're looking for six by six in vertical. there nope right there six by six lines six in vertical double click on that and it goes to the center and this one we don't have anything else to bring in and I am going to just move it out of the way here so some people have been putting other things in their filler blocks if you wanted to do that now is the time if you wanted to add something in my opinion this is a pretty busy fabric it's that really cute one and I don't want to take away from that too much um, but if you had like a plain fabric, if you were using your own fabrics and you had a plain fabric, this is a great opportunity to personalize and add something um, different. And this is when you would do it, when you've got it already on your um, embroidery software all ready to go. So this is when you would do that. Um, but I'm not going to add anything to this. I like it just as it is. So we have everything here, but we want to do a little bit of joining since we have this quilting design and this quilting design, we should be able to join these. And again, we have that default one blue and default two orange. So we just want to take away the, the third step. Here's the third step of the first one. And here is the third step of the second one. So we want to just change the colors on those, just like we did on the first other, the other one that we did. All right, so click on the color and then choose dark aqua or whatever color you choose. And then for the orange, click on the color and choose blaze or whatever color uh, makes you happy. All right, and then here, same thing. On this third one, we're going to click on the color and I'm going to choose dark aqua so that I can join those because we did dark aqua on the other. And then default to orange, click on the color and we're going to choose blaze. All right, so now those should join. We're going to make sure that it will. And then if we leave these default 17 turquoise, that is the quilting design of both of these, those will join as well. So what I like to do is look at the color. So this second one is meant to be white, which will be good because that's that busy fabric. And then on page 12, I believe it's like green or aqua. Let's just see. Um, so for the third star, it's going to be the sage green. So I want to make sure that these do not join um, so that I have a moment to change my thread color. So on this second one, I'm just going to choose a different color. I'm going to choose Sprout. All right, so then those won't join. Hopefully all of these uh, placement and tack downs will join. Um, and hopefully the, it does not with the star. So let's just check it. I think we should be good, but I'm not absolutely certain. We currently have 13 steps. So let's see how it does. Go to utility color sort. And it reduced by four. So let's see new view. And let's just see what it did. All right, we've got the placement for the batting, the tack down for the batting, placement for the main fabric, tack down for the main fabric. The one um, quilting design, that's perfect so that I can change the thread color. And then it did not bring it up. I can move it. So if you can see it down here, here's the second one. If I wanted to um, move this so that they all finish at the same time, I could do that, but it's not going to matter because this is going to jump into the applique design anyway. So it's totally up to you if you want to move it or not. Um, I'll show you how in case you do want to. All right. So here's the applique piece and the applique tack down and the satin stitch. So that one, that's all perfect. It finished all of the first block and then it finishes the second blocks block with the quilting design after. So since they are not the same color, we could move it. I believe if I recall, I found it easier to do it from the bottom and bringing it over to the left. Yep. 
right? And that didn't bring it all the way up. So that would still be after this first applique part. And so I want to bring it up one more, a little higher, I guess. Let's see. So we have that one and then we have that one. All right, so that's how you would move it. Um, if you click on it and kind of bring it over to the left, I find it the easiest way to move it. It's, um, I wonder if you could, I think I heard you could also do it with your arrow keys. Oh no, that moved the whole design. Don't do that. <laughs> that Did you see it moved this? So don't do that. That's not how to move a color. That's moving the actual design. All right. So anyway, so this one is all done. We're down to, um, what are we, nine color changes and it all grouped exactly how we wanted it to be. Um, and I did move this. You don't have to move it. That really doesn't matter at all. But I wanted to show you how in case you chose to have um, them both quilted at the same time. All right, so I'm going to go to File, Save, Stitch File As. And I have star one, two groups. So now I'm gonna call this star three and um, filler three, because it's the third section. Um, and then I'm gonna hit save. All right, super easy, right? So let's get stitching those. Thank you. 